The Book of Boba Fett, Chapter 4. The Gathering Storm. You just can't get enough of the back to scene, huh? That's a cool visual effect. Oh, there just happens to be a repair shop in the middle of nowhere. Convenient. I like that scene a lot. The way he was talking seemed like Boba Fett to me. Calm, collected, in the shadows. I thought the door only opens the other way, but okay. He's got a soft spot for animals, from what it seems, but... Okay. That reminds me of, uh, there was a scene in uh, Prometheus, where that guy was mapping the, um, the caverns. Same type of uh, mapping system. <laughs> Reminds me of uh, General Grievous. You got his ship back. Sleeve one. Oh, look at that. Now that's Boba. Now that's Boba Fett. Not a word. Just keep it that way, please. <laughs> Don't tell him he's gonna blow it up. He's gonna blow it up. Oh, what is he doing? He's gonna point his cannons to it. It's gonna grab onto it. That's a cool shot. Somebody's gonna get sucked in there again. Be careful. Okay, that's badass. <laughs> Oh shit! Fire in the hole. <laughs> okay, that was wild. I like that. At least they went back to the Sarlacc. Wait a minute. Didn't Boba Fett use the flamethrower? So that's where he ran off to. To the bar. Your knuckle dusters are more feared than blasters. You've met every challenge. Twilight You've cleavage. Every trophy. Whoa. Oh! <laughs> we'll 
monkeys have been known to rip arms out of their sockets. Yeah, he's going to team up with, with uh, Boba for sure. You can tell. Yeah, Boba Fett's not even trying to remove his helmet anymore. It's already off, if you noticed. <laughs> I thought he shot him just like Han under the, the table with Greedo. I thought he, he had a blaster with <laughs> the Rancor. Is he going to get laid tonight? What I'm short on is muscle. Credits can buy muscle. I'm sure he's got his, uh, his eye on Fennec too. Like, unless he's gay. I liked it. I actually really liked it. Now, the scene where Boba was talking to Fennec uh, about how he ex was explaining to her how the Tusken Raiders found him. Uh, he was left for dead in the Sarlacc pit. I, I really enjoyed that scene. It, it was was showcasing how, you know, dark of a character he was. Seeing that he was talking in that monotone type voice it was very well done. I think uh, Tamora uh, did really well portraying Boba Fett for who he is. So we also discover that Boba Fett seems to have a soft spot for animals. Uh, you could see that he's having a playful moment with the Bantha, you know, sharing his meal and saying bye to him. And as we've seen in the previous episode, he has a he has a soft spot for rancors. After Boba Fett gets his ship, he goes and finds the the biker gang and he just obliterates all of them. And uh, seeing that side of Boba Fett, you know, that revenge part seems to be more of character than what we've seen in the last three episodes. Now, the big surprise for me in this episode was the scene with Boba Fett takes his uh, slave one, flies it over to the Sarlacc looking for his uh, armor. And he sticks the the ship right over the the Sarlacc pit. I think it was an interesting uh, perspective the way Boba just grabbed the ship, tilted it over, and just kind of put the cockpit right into the hold. I was under the impression that the Sarlacc was already dead. I mean, Boba Fett stuck his flamethrower, and he somehow got out of the ground and he dug himself way out. So I was assuming the Sarlacc was dead. But what was neat too was the. The seismic charges, uh, they set one down and it blows up and the way the sand rippled up, that was cool. I really enjoyed that segment of the episode and uh, goes to show that uh, Boba Fett still has it. One episode, one episode, guys. He needs to just leave his helmet on the whole time, okay? I think Dave Filoni has an episode where he's getting to direct. I think it's number six or even seven. I'm not sure, but I would love to have Boba Fett for one entire episode where he has his helmet on the whole time. Doesn't speak. Okay, maybe he speak here and there, but he doesn't have to say much. Even the actor, Tamora Morrison, said in an interview. Well, I was hoping not to say as much as I have already in the first two episodes. I speak far too much. In fact, in the beginning, I was trying to get past my lines on to Ming-Na. Yes, and I always say, excuse me, excuse me, director. Uh, I really feel that Ming-Na should say these lines because I want to stay mysterious. Because well, obviously John's uh, the you know one of the key writers, so uh, yeah. and so sometimes I'd always say I, I I think this is too much. I think this is too much. If anything, the actors need to do is to know the characters they play. Mark Hamill pretty much had a disagreement with Ryan Johnson when he had uh, fundamentally disagreed of how Ryan Johnson had portrayed Luke in The Last Jedi, and of course, everybody hated it. Even even Mark Hamill said it best. Who is this guy? How did the most optimistic, hopeful character in the galaxy turn into this hermit who says it's time for the Jedi to end? I, I read that and I said, what? I mean, that's not what a Jedi does. I mean, a Jedi is optimistic. A Jedi is has tenacity. He never gives up. He doesn't secrete himself on an island, but you, you'll, you'll see. That says a lot. I think, you know, you guys should really pay attention to these little cues because something there's some sort of disconnect behind the scenes, and it's quite unfortunate. If anybody was to know the character of, of Boba Fett, it would be definitely Tamar Morrison. But again, props to him for this episode where he was talking in that really, like, you know, deep voice. 
I felt like when I was listening to him, you know, that that was Boba Fett. And uh, I think we need to see more of that in the next couple of episodes. So what are your thoughts, guys? As always, this is Cito. Thank you for watching. I will see you for Chapter 5.